Hi, this is Catherine from Adventure CC. I've been getting creative during lockdown with one of my favourite things, which are these, which you've probably either seen or heard about or maybe even used yourself. So I'm going to take you through a little process-based project which I've been doing with a pair of mud guards. I think they turned out okay. I'd be interested to hear what you think, um, which I've made for a mate of mine. So I hope you enjoy it and I'm maybe even inspired to have a go yourself because it's really good fun. I picked up my first can of spray bike back last September when I decided to revamp my gravel bike into a flat bar mountain bike gravel bike combo and had a lot of fun and it was only in the last few weeks over lockdown where we can't really go out and do much that I've gone back to it using some of my old tins to have a little experiment with some bottle cages and picture frames and things and I'm hooked all over again so I put out a little plea on Instagram to my mates to send me stuff to paint and I got these so these are a set of SKS mud guards. They're for a mate's Cannondale Topstone and he's very uh, trustingly sent them my way. I've already done a little bit of prep on these uh, to get them ready for the spray bike. And I think it's really important to exaggerate that the more prep that you do, the more you'll get out of it and the longer lasting the finish will be. Um, I certainly found this out when I was painting the bike. And doing something like this is a really good precursor to doing a bigger project. I kind of wish that I'd started small and worked my way up. Firstly taken off all of the accessory parts, so um, here I've got all together all the little bolts and flaps and things that hold those together. Um, that's really important to keep them in a safe place because we need to put them back on later. You can tape over them but I just thought it would give it a um, better finish if you can remove any excess parts like that. And then I've taken the upper surface and sanded the whole thing. You don't need anything fancy, I've just used general purpose sandpaper. Um, but yeah, I've just sanded this whole thing down. Um, making sure that you get in and around all the creases and stuff. And then on the underside, I've decided I'm not going to paint the inside. Um, so I've just left that as it is. And then finally, I've just taped off any of the mounts and the fixings for the mud guards that I don't want to get painted. Um, this is especially important if you're doing things like bikes where you can have bearings. Um, you don't want an extra layer of paint in there. And with a, a really good Stanley blade, or just an average Stanley blade, um, you can get really close in um, and prepare it really, really well. Um, so there's no excuses really. So I'm going to take you through the process of painting these. Hopefully they turn out well. Um, I'm going to base the design. He's given me a completely blank canvas. The bike is this like shimmering emerald kind of colour. Um, and I'm going to base the design on a bottle cage that I did a couple of weeks ago that looks really cool. Um, I've got a few more colours here which have been really kindly um, given to us thanks to my mate Gareth at Spray Bike. Absolute legend. If you ever have the pleasure of meeting him at a show, do go and say hello. Um, and yeah, a few more colours and just sort of see how it goes. I'm not very good at designing and planning stuff. Um, which I don't think necessarily is a bad thing in this case. Okay, so I'm going to start by getting rid of everything that I needed for the prep, like sandpaper. And I'll actually need the masking tape in a minute for part of the design. Um, and seeing what new colours I have. Oh, this is good. So, I've got a good selection in here. Some orange, yellow, another pink the same as I've got because I use that one quite a lot. A sort of tealy colour. Um, this one's called Strawberry Hill, so it's more corally than that, that one. And then a khaki. Okay, so for this design, it's a series of really bright and punchy, hot kind of colours underneath. So I'm going to separate out all of those kind. So pinks, oranges and yellows. And then I'm going to apply the masking tape and then do a second coat, which is going to be the sort of more chill purple, blues and teals, and maybe a bit of green. And then I think maybe a little bit of white and pearl blue paint splatter over the top when I'm finished. So I can put all of these aside for now. And then this one is a really important one. Um, so that's a frame builder's transparent finish. So if you don't use that one, you get a matte paint finish. And then the more of this you use, the more gloss it becomes. And it also helps to give like an outer protective layer. So I'm actually a really big fan of that one, but we don't need it for now. So the first thing is you've got to shake each can for two minutes. It's pretty tiresome, but probably worth it. 
When you start to spray it, um, definitely don't go straight onto whatever you're painting um, because the first bit that comes out is like a bit strange. So try it on whatever you've, I really gumped this out, one up last time, on whatever you're using um, to protect the things in your garage or your home. As you can see, I've made a fabulous work stand here out of some cardboard and a, um, a frame jig. And then once you're happy with it, I'll just show you what the first few sprays look like if you haven't. So it's like transparent. Start to get through the pigment. So that's not what you want to do straight onto your frame or your guards or whatever you're using. Maybe a bit too vigorous. subtly different from the other pink. Be good for a fade job, I reckon. This looks a bit crap, <laughs> if I'm honest. And I was really disappointed when I first made my bike and did the underlay and I was like, oh God, this is gonna be awful. But when you then mask it up and put on the second layer and start to peel it away, it does look really cool. So just bear with it. And you can be as random as you like. As you can tell, I'm not exactly putting a huge amount of thought into what goes where. I'm going to start mixing it up in a minute so there's not any huge blocks of colour because if we've got sort of streaks going across that have been marked off, masked off, you want to see the changing colour underneath rather than just one block. isn't recommended but I learned just through a bit of trial and error and it does make it things a bit messy but if you hold down the nozzle just a little bit then you get like this splatter effect Let's see if I can replicate it now like this so you get really big blobs which I think adds a lot more texture to it so I'm just gonna do a few of those now So now I'm just gonna zoom in and show you what these look like now. You could rub them as they are. Thankfully, it doesn't take very long to dry um, before you go on to the next layer. I'm gonna give this maybe 20, 30 minutes just to be extra sure. Um, and then I'm gonna start masking up and adding the second layer. Uh, so I'm gonna look for any areas that I particularly like, any paint splatters or things, and make sure I cover over those areas because whatever you cover, you will reveal later and that'll be kept. So you have to 
think a bit backwards. So now this first base coat is done, I'm gonna set about using my best friend, the masking tape. So this is a really, really good thing to use if you're not blessed enough to have a, a vinyl cutter where you can custom make your own shapes and text and stuff. It's super easy to use. You've got either the option of straight lines or jagged edges. And this is a complete, um, I would say steal, maybe inspiration from Squib Bikes. If you're not familiar with them, you should really go and check them out. They're an awesome group of people out in Sacramento, California, making incredible bikes, or, uh, using spray bike as well for the finishing touches. I'm just gonna liberally apply this um, to all the places that I don't want to be covered in my next coat, which is gonna be all those cool colors on top. And I'm going for the jagged edges. So, do these. So I'm looking for those areas of colour and splatter that I really like, that I want to preserve and show through the upper coat. So now these have dried and I've masked them off, paying particular attention to the areas of the mudguards that are going to show the most, it's time for the second coat. I'm going to introduce a little bit of this one, which is Milan Blue. Um, I've used this one quite a lot in the past. It's really subtle, but actually really, really nice. Um, and so that will just add in some little like sparkles, almost like stars. The one that I did before with the purple on the bottle cage, I thought it looked a little bit like the Canyon Tram women's kit, um, which is really pretty, a little sort of nebula or whatever. fun bit where you get to take off the mask and see if what you've done is any good or not. As you can tell I've got quite a blue hand because I did just go on underneath and make sure that the, the rim and everything was covered. Um, so yeah here goes. It's, uh, it's definitely what one for the faint-hearted. This is definitely a job that requires a lot of patience. So exciting, this is honestly my favourite bit. Cool, huh? Right then, here is almost the final result. So, let's see, that is the front guard. And there's the rear. They're pretty bold. <laughs> I didn't expect anything else really. Um, but the last thing to do is I'm gonna lacquer them, probably with a couple of coats, just to try and make them really robust. Because obviously with winter riding and stuff, they're gonna need um, a bit of 
protection. But yeah, let me know what you think. And if you have any questions about the process as well, um, I'm all ears. And I'm definitely not an expert, but definitely an spray pack enthusiast. So like I said, I'm just gonna use a transparent finish and make sure I give them a couple of really good coats um, and leave them to dry really well as well, which is important. So now I've applied two thin layers of gloss or this um, frame painter's finish to the guards. I'm just gonna, because it's quite windy here today, it's blowing in that direction. I've got quite a different finish on one side to the other. So I'm just gonna switch them around and do one more. This is a really, really hard bit because you just wanna like do the very finishing touches, but you've gotta be patient here because it, it does take a little bit longer to dry this one, but it makes all the difference. Um, so I'm just going to do one more coat in this and then once it's completely dry, I'll probably leave it for a couple of hours, then go about reattaching the all important flaps <laughs> very carefully, mind. So here they are, the finished thing. Uh, it's actually really hard taking pictures and, and video of mud guards, believe it or not. Um, so I'm really looking forward to seeing them on Rob's bike. I think the gloss adds a really cool shine in the sun. Um, and hopefully we'll make them a bit more robust for winter riding as well. And I've just popped on the mud guards on the flaps there and taken off all the masking tape for the fixings and stuff. And they look pretty pucker if you ask me. Um, but I'd be really interested to hear what you think. And let me know if you've done any Sprobrite projects as well. We'd love to see them on adventure. <laughs>